Is counting macros the key to healthy eating? Get ready to decode macros, what they are, how they work within your body, and find out if you really should be tracking them. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is our second video of our Back to Basics nutrition series, and today we are tackling a hot topic macros. We're going to explore what they are, why they are buzzing all over social media, and whether counting them is really necessary for you. Macro stands for macronutrients, which are the nutrients that our bodies need in the largest amounts. And there are three key macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And these provide energy, which we measure in calories. So when someone says they are counting their macros, they're tracking their intake of their carbs, their fats, and their protein. And counting macros has gained a lot of popularity, particularly in the fitness world, but understanding what they are can help you make better food choices without the need for any strict counting. We're starting with carbs. When you think of carbohydrates, what comes to your mind? You know how there are good and bad carbs? Is it just bread and pasta? There's actually a lot more to carbohydrates than you might realize. Carbs are our body's main source of energy, helping power everything from your morning jog to keeping your brain sharp. You need carbs. Your brain runs on glucose. I'm not, you, for simple cognitive functions, you need them. And beyond bread and pasta, there are many healthy carbs out there like fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, and they all offer great nutritional benefits. So let's break it down. Carbohydrates fall into two main categories, simple and complex carbs. Simple carbs, these are found in sugary snacks and provide that quick energy boost, but they can also lead to rapid spikes in our blood sugar. Think about candy or soda. And then we have complex carbs. These are foods like oats and beans, and they digest more slowly, giving you a longer lasting energy and keeping you fuller longer. Now here's a fun comparison. We've got a blueberry donut compared to some oatmeal with blueberries in it. The blueberry donut is a simple carb. It's high in sugar and very low in fiber. The oatmeal, on the other hand, is a complex carb. It's rich in fiber, it's got protein and important vitamins and minerals. So even though both donuts and oats are carbs, they affect your body pretty differently. Now, carbohydrates can also be divided into three different types, sugars, starches, and fibers. Sugars, these are simple carbs that are found in foods like candy, soda, honey, and fruit juice. They digest really quickly and can cause that immediate spike in our blood sugar. Then we have starches. These are complex carbs that our bodies will turn into glucose for energy. And the more processed the starch is, the faster it digests. My two greatest enemies, Ross. Rachel Green and complex carbohydrates. <laughs> fiber is the third one. Fiber is a type of complex carbohydrate that comes only from plants and it isn't fully digested in our system, which is actually a good thing. Fiber supports our gut health, can help lower cholesterol, can help us control our blood sugar, and might reduce the risk of diabetes. So it is super important. Within fiber, we've got two main types. There's soluble fiber. This dissolves in water and it forms like a gel in your digestive system. And it's found in foods like oats, apples. And then we have insoluble fiber. This doesn't dissolve. It helps add bulk to our stool, helping us have regular bowel movements. And you can find it in nuts, in whole grains, and lots of green vegetables. Understanding carbs is more than just choosing between white bread and cauliflower. It's about making smart choices that support your health in the long run. And there is a common misconception about carbs. A lot of people think all carbs are bad, but that is not true. Carbohydrates are essential for our energy, especially for people who are active. The key is to choose the right types, like whole grains, veggies, and fruits, over processed sugars. Now let's talk about fats. This is another often misunderstood macronutrient. Fats are essential for absorbing vitamins like A, D, E, and K for supporting our brain health and so much more. But not all fats are created equal. Imagine you're preparing a delicious salad. You toss in some leafy greens, some colorful veggies, then drizzle olive oil over top. Not only does that olive oil enhance the flavor, but it also allows your body to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Fats can be grouped into three main categories, saturated, unsaturated, and trans fat. The healthy fats are unsaturated fats that are good for you and can be found in foods like 
olive oil, avocados, nuts, and seeds. These fats help your body produce hormones, store energy, and build cell membranes. And it's a good idea to include a variety of healthy fats in your diet. Besides just nuts and avocados, there's also fatty fish like salmon and flaxseed, which are great sources of omega-3 fats. Now for the less healthy fats, in contrast, too much saturated fat and trans fat, often found in processed foods, can be bad for your heart and your overall health. A common misconception with fats is that many people think eating fat will make them gain weight. And while fats are calorically dense with nine calories per gram, research shows that increased fat consumption in the form of nuts is significantly associated with less weight gain over a four year interval. So don't fear these healthy fats, embrace those sources. If you want a little deeper dive into fats, check out my video, Unraveling the Confusion About Dietary Fats. I'm gonna link to it right here. It's packed with helpful information to guide you. All right, let's talk about protein. These essential macronutrients are often called the building blocks of our bodies because they are key players in building and repairing tissues, including muscles and bones. But protein isn't just for muscle growth. It's also super important for hormone regulation, enzyme function, and keeping our immune system really strong. Proteins are made up of amino acids, some of which are essential, meaning that our bodies can't make them, so we need to get them from our food. Mix up your protein sources. Try lean meats like chicken and turkey, fish like salmon and tuna, and eggs are a fantastic source of high quality protein. And then don't forget about dairy. Yogurt and cheeses are also packed with protein. Now, if you're plant-based, there's a ton of options too. Beans and lentils, tofu and tempeh, they're all excellent plant-based sources of proteins that can help you meet your nutritional needs. There's some common misconceptions about proteins too. Some believe that protein is only important for bodybuilders, but it's vital for everyone, supporting everything from our hormone production to our immune function. And it's worth noting that our protein needs vary depending on your age, activity level, and your health goals. Nutrition is not a one size fits all approach. And if you're looking for someone who can help create a custom nutrition plan for you, find a registered dietitian to help you, like me. I'll drop a link to my programs below. Now that we know what macros are, let's talk about counting macros. And this has become super popular in recent years. It's all over social media, all over the internet. And while tracking macros can help some people become more aware of their food choices, it's really not necessary for everyone. Now there are general percentile ranges that some people follow for carbs, fat, and protein, but these ranges should be based on you, your goals and your needs. And for some counting their macros can create a stress or an unhealthy relationship with food. So do you need to count macros? Not really. It all depends on you and your goals, but research tells us that focusing on food quality versus quantity, the counting aspect, can be more impactful for our health. And what do I mean by food quality? That means focusing on making sure you're having your fruits and vegetables, beans, legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds, all those wonderful things, instead of focusing on counting, whether it's calories or macros. The key to mastering macros is finding the right balance that fits your individual needs and goals. Everyone's ideal macro balance is unique and it's influenced by all those things we've talked about, how active you are, what your health goals are, and what you like to eat. And if you're wondering what other food trends might be messing with your health goals, head right on over to my video on healthy eating traps to avoid next. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video gave you a clearer picture of what macros exactly are, why people are counting them, and how understanding them can actually boost your health. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more nutrition tips and delicious healthy recipes. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, eat well, be well, thrive.